In this edition of Pharmacy Pearls, we'll review an important study called the SPRINT trial, which is likely to influence the way that high blood pressure is treated. By the time we conclude, you should be able to decide whether or not this approach is right for you. First of all, the SPRINT trial was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2015. It was not blinded, meaning that patients and researchers were aware of the treatment arm to which they were assigned. It was primarily funded by government, as opposed to being sponsored by the pharmaceutical industry. In the study, 9,361 patients with a systolic blood pressure of 130 or higher and at high risk of cardiovascular disease, but without diabetes, were randomly assigned to achieve a target systolic blood pressure of either less than 120 in the intervention treatment group or less than 140 in the standard treatment group. The primary outcome of interest was the first occurrence of the composite of heart attack, other acute coronary syndromes, stroke, heart failure, or death from cardiovascular causes. Of note, it is a well-designed, high-quality study. Let's continue with a summary of the baseline characteristics of the study population. The average age was 68, including 28% over age 75, 64% were men, 28% had chronic kidney disease, 43% were previous smokers, and 13% were current smokers. The average blood pressure was 140 over 78, and the average body mass index was 29.9. As you can probably tell, the study population was at high risk for cardiovascular disease. In fact, 17% had existing clinical cardiovascular disease, and among those who did not, the average Framingham 10-year cardiovascular disease risk score was 20%, which is considered high. At one year, the average systolic blood pressure was 121 in the intensive treatment group and 136 in the standard treatment group. Additionally, the intensive group took an average of three blood pressure-lowering medications, which was one more than the standard group. The median follow-up time was 3.26 years, and the study was actually stopped early after observing a benefit from the intervention. Encouragingly, these results were consistent across various subgroup analyses, such as in the very elderly. Let's now consider how those receiving standard treatment fared. According to study results, after 3.26 years, out of 1,000 patients receiving standard treatment, 932 will not experience the primary outcome, whereas 68 will. This risk of 6.8% over 3.26 years corresponds to a 10-year cardiovascular disease risk of 21%, which mirrors the level of risk that was predicted at baseline. By comparison, after 3.26 years, out of 1,000 patients receiving intensive treatment, 52 will experience the primary outcome. Out of the 948 who do not, 932 would have been fine regardless and 16 will avoid the primary outcome owing to intensive blood pressure treatment. Stated differently, for every 63 patients who receive intensive treatment for 3.26 years, one person will benefit. This is the number needed to treat. Importantly, intensive treatment was also associated with a mortality benefit. Specifically, after 3.26 years, out of 1,000 patients receiving standard treatment, 955 people will still be alive, and 45 will have died. On the other hand, with intensive treatment, 33 will have died. Out of the 967 who are still alive, 955 would have been fine regardless, and 12 people will owe their lives to intensive blood pressure treatment. Stated differently, for every 84 patients who receive intensive treatment for 3.26 years, one person will be alive who would not have been with standard treatment. It is also important to consider the harms associated with intensive treatment. According to study results, the number needed to harm for serious low blood pressure was 106, serious electrolyte abnormality was 126, serious syncope or fainting was 173. Fortunately, however, there was no increased risk of injurious falls. 
Finally, the number needed to harm for acute kidney injury or failure was 56. Ultimately, it would be reasonable to say that the risk-benefit ratio is favorable. As we conclude, it is important to remember that people with the following conditions were excluded from the study. Diabetes, ejection fraction less than 35%, past stroke, glomerular filtration rate less than 20, and standing systolic blood pressure less than 110 at one minute. Where this is the case, the results may not be applicable to these patients. The bottom line, according to the SPRINT trial, is that elderly patients with blood pressure above 130 and at high risk for cardiovascular disease, who are tolerating their existing medications well, may benefit from additional treatment to further lower their blood pressure. At the same time, keep in mind that over 98% of patients who try this will not receive a benefit. Be sure to assess tolerability and closely monitor serum electrolyte levels and kidney function. Finally, the average blood pressure in the intensive treatment group was 121, so don't become fixated on the systolic blood pressure target of 120. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you're now comfortable deciding whether or not this approach is right for you. For more information on the SPRINT trial, I'd encourage you to consult Medication Mythbusters at www.therapeuticseducation.org. To receive my free weekly newsletter, sign up at www.pharmacypearls.com. Please also show your support for Pharmacy Pearls by subscribing to my YouTube channel.